Thank you very much. A uh, long day, a fire alarm, and one presentation to go. So let me get started and talk about, uh, you heard the different backgrounds that people had in terms of why they've moved to AR, to wearable technology, whether it was Six Sigma on some parts, whether it was efficiency on other parts. And in the food industry, um, let's start by saying, you know, what was our motivation? NSF is a uh, what's called uh, in the testing certification and inspection industry, it's called the tick industry. And we work on thousands of farms and do 150,000 audits around the globe. But really our main driver is around a mission statement. It's a mission statement that is to protect and improve human health. And that's what led us down the path to look at new innovations such as wearable technology. And why we did it, it's because when you look at the food supply chain, it's become highly globalized, particularly over the last 25 years. There's a high degree of automotion, uh, automation that's affected the industry itself, but not necessarily the people that work in the industry, which means their jobs have become much more complex. And if you look at the number of recalls today in the food industry, it far outnumbers anything that we've had in the past. And at the same time, the ability to detect contaminants in food has really increased at a very almost exponential rate. You have PulseNet with the CDC where they de detect people that are getting sick around the globe. So there's a lot of efforts underway to try to fix that today. There's one that came over here from Europe eight to 10 years ago. It was called the Global Food Safety Initiative. You're probably familiar with a law that was passed by Congress four years ago around uh, the Food Safety Modernization Act. But really when it comes right down to it and you say, you know, where's the impact? At best, we're not seeing it. If you just look in the United States alone, 40 million people get sick every year just from the food they eat, and over 3,000 people will die. So this is kind of, you might say, the state of the industry out there today. So what it means is that our traditional approach that's been used out there, whether it's auditing that's done to help support food safety practices around the globe, whether it's a lot of these initiatives, you know, we're probably not losing ground, but we certainly aren't gaining anything. So what it really means is an industry you know, you've seen the automotive industry has stepped up with technology. You've seen it in aerospace. You've seen it in logistics with uh, DHL and the presentation a, a couple before me. But really, we really haven't seen that in the food industry. So we really need to look across food in terms of how you step outside the box. So how we got started with it is, fortunately, Google happens to be one of those 150,000 audits we do across their campuses around the globe, and they have 100. 60 plus food operations on those campuses. And it was kind of towards the tail end of Google Glass not having a, a good welcome in the consumer market. And it was November of 2014 where we approached Google and said, what about enterprise applications? And what about enterprise applications within the food industry for Google Glass? And the traditional way of conducting an audit, whether it was at a Google facility or elsewhere, is you put that auditor on site, which means they're always traveling. And they're the road warriors out there that go from one location to another. And so the pilot we proposed was something like this. What if instead of sending an auditor to a facility, we sent Google Glass? And instead that auditor literally could be anywhere else in the world and they complete the audit remotely by having the manager of the food operation wear the Google Glass and be guided from the remote auditor at a remote location, again, anywhere around the globe. And when they were done, the facility would still get an audit report right through their email as if the auditor had been on premise. So we took this concept and with Google's approval, put it into motion, and we did our first test on site at the Google campus in February 2015. So what was shipped to the facility was the kit you saw on the left, see on the left, which was, you know, the Google Glass, and it was everything a manager would need from a thermometer and other flashlight to conduct an audit. And on the right is the manager of that food facility in Mountain View, along with uh, the QA manager for their support group at uh, Bon Appetit. And what we learned from that process is, first of all, um, our impression of that day was that it was probably nothing short in our minds of a total disaster. Everything we had for backup information on connectivity didn't work. We had two MiFi units, they broke down, we couldn't connect to the local network, uh, we couldn't hear, so we had to use actually both noise reduction, reduction earbuds connected to a cell phone, connected to the auditor in Los Angeles to conduct the audit. But the good news is, 
it was Google. And they really taught us something, which is, you know what? It just means you go back and you make improvements and you try again. And that's the nature of wearable technology or any of these new innovations that are out there today, is it is a lot of trial error and going back to it. But we've also learned good things. You know, a manager through the course of the audit would say, well, you told me that this wasn't right, but how should I fix it? So we created a bank of what we call teachable moments where the, we could actually tap into it and remotely play a short 30, 45 second video for a manager to give them interactive training as part of this auditing process. So fast forward two years and what did we learn? Well, really the biggest thing we learned is it's not just about this two-way auditing that we started with, that there are applications for wearable technology that is really gonna change the food industry around the globe. So you may recognize some of these locations like the Oakland Airport or Sacramento Airport where some of this technology is being used today, wearables for interactive training. On the bottom right is actually a seafood inspection being done in Bangkok that was broadcast over to Germany where they could evaluate the quality of the product before it was shipped to the EU. In the upper right hand corner is actually an auditor conducting an auditor or audit using wearable technology to enhance their ability as an auditor to conduct an audit and that's being done in Dubai. So really we've gone from one short application with Google on the campus in Mountain View to where applications of this are occurring around the globe today. And one more thing for us as an organization, we took it very seriously and created actually a startup unit within our organization called iSucceed just for the purposes of rolling out that across enterprise applications within our organization as well as taking it out to customers across the food industry. So how are we using it? The efficiency things you've heard in previous presentations are there. You, it's hard to imagine how many times you have to have two people on site either to have extra levels of expertise, to have what we call shadow auditing out there where we're required to have auditors go out with auditors to train them. All those applications can now be done remotely and it's all about using wearable technology. And it's gonna change the industry that we're in. This tick industry, tech, you know, testing, inspection, and certification is gonna undergo some major changes because what's happening out there is as complexity increases, the need for skilled individuals and that knowledge to be on site and use it in conducting audits, that need is continuing to go up. Those resources are actually going down. A lot of the people that have this technical expertise have been out there in the industry for 30 and 40 years. They're retiring. They, aren't, they don't want to be road warriors anymore. But if you could take that technical expertise and put it behind a computer anywhere and use wearable technology to actually perform the audits, it's going to change how we do business over the next three to five years. The other thing we're seeing how the food industry is using it is we had a major food company in the United States that wanted to evaluate their first production run of a new product that they were offering coming off a production line of all places in Moose Jaw, Canada. Well, certainly Moose Jaw wasn't their first choice to get on a plane and go to. So using Google Glass, they actually used two days where they were able to evaluate and make adjustments on the production line on the quality of the products. They're using it for supplier evaluations at different locations around the globe. Uh, seafood, the seafood supply chain is one where you ship products around the globe. A lot of it is in Asia. You put a product on a container of product on the water that doesn't meet requirements and you could have six containers behind it with the same problem. So being able to evaluate product and know that it's right before it goes on the water is just critical in the whole food supply chain. So what we've learned through all of this is, actually I use that phrase, failure is the beginning of success. In the implementation process, what we encourage everyone is, we're venturing into new area here. And it's gonna require everyone to have the patience to have the idea that when something goes wrong, particularly with connectivity, when you start to look at all the global locations where you're not in one location where you have access to a network, you're gonna have problems. There's gonna be hardware and software advances. You know, We've branched off into using three different wearable devices today because each of them, someone mentioned earlier, have their unique applications where they work better. And it's all about change management. You know, We find that in the industry. Some of the industries are very 
forward facing in terms of aerospace, automotive, and, and, and embracing technology, the food industry is not necessarily one when it comes to these aspects. So where is it going? You know, everything I think I've talked about now is I think I would classify as an evolution. You know, the industry is evolving in a way where wearable technology is going to change how we do things. But really, the future is AR. You hear that today, you're going to hear it tomorrow, and you're going to hear it again on Friday, where really AR is the solution. Because if you look at what causes issues across the food industry today, over 95% of it comes down to one thing, human error. And AR is our first opportunity in the food industry to really have an answer. And you've seen some examples of it already here today. But AR holds the key in the food industry to have the ability to identify problems before they occur and take the corrective action. And essentially, that's where it's going to make a major impact. And that is the future over the next few years. So we really believe that in the next five to 10 years, augmented reality will be transformational. It will no longer be evolutionary in terms of the things we've seen to date. And it is going to ensure the safety of the food supply. And it's also going to secure, ensure food security, because right now there are billions of pounds of food that just get wasted every year as a result of things that are just nothing short of just human error that has occurred in the supply chain. And that's about to change. And I think the things and what you see in the conference here the next two days is really going to just demonstrate the impact that AR will have on that. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. I found that really insightful and very interesting indeed. That'd be great. Any questions on Slido? There we go. There's one for you, Tom. How customer sites trying to Game, game the, the system, system and, and cheat. cheat with remote auditing using smart glasses does oh, make that harder. Um, actually, it gives you a capability to do a lot more monitoring because, in essence, one of the things we offer up to our customers is to say, okay, we're in you know over 20,000 food production facilities. Oh, I'm sorry. And if you <laughs> usually my voice carries anyway, it, we're in over 20,000 production facilities. At any point in time, if an auditor is there, you can tap in and see anything that's going on. As far as integrity, which is one of the things you worry about when you do business in the food industry around the globe, you can actually, at any point in time, monitor what's going on within a facility. So actually, I think it ups the game in some respects in terms of capabilities that are out there today to where it is going to be harder in the future for people to mask things. Cool. OK. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Tom. Thank you. So.